Hi, this is Brian from BeatCreature.com, and today in this segment we're having a look at Chad Smith playing Danny California by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now the song is fairly easy, but what we're going to do is take a couple of the parts, slow them down, loop them, because later on in the course we have a couple 16th note syncopated parts that uh, are always nice to get, but maybe sometimes overlooked. So what we're going to do is uh, plug that into a powerful app called AnyTune. AnyTune will allow you to speed up, slow down, loop, and trigger sections with a MIDI controller and a slew of other powerful options to help you learn, practice, transcribe, and perform. Down below, you'll have the option to download the app if you haven't yet. Number two, download the specified song from iTunes and then download the MARC loop files from BeatCreature.com that correspond with the song you downloaded from iTunes. So the first groove we're having a look at here is the verse beat, which is also the intro and the bridge beat as well. So I'm going to show you how he played it, and there are a couple variations that we can also play to get through the song and still capture a lot of that essence that just allows us to have fun and drive through the song. Um, so you'll notice uh, I'll add a couple little things on here as, as we go along, but the main part of this is going to sound like this. So... Okay, so now I left out a couple things. So now there's a drag, uh, what we call a drag, that kind of flows right into the first bass drum. Now sometimes it could be a nice buzz, so it sounds like this. Okay, or you can get uh, a, a little bit more detailed, double stroke, which is. You hear a lot of both of them throughout the song. So again, listen, see if you can, both of them are acceptable, of course. So let me play the groove now with that part in there. So. Okay, now that's pretty much the main beat that he plays. Now, there are a couple of variations that you can play along with the song as well. So I'm going to show you the first variation. Now, if you can't seem to get your bass drum to play that, those two fast bass drums in there, so... Especially up to tempo. Okay, now the other thing you can do is change one of that, that first bass drum on the awe of two. Now, if you're reading your music there, you can change it to a snare drum. So it sounds like this. Okay, well, now we're not too far off because still in various places of the song, he'll actually play that as well, okay? Uh, the other thing you can do is leave that syncopated 16th note part completely out and just rock out the 8th note. So it sounds like 1 and 2, 3 and 4. Remember that the, the one thing that helps us drive through the song is the bass guitar part and your bass drum that gets that 1 and 2, 3 and, and the strung backbeat on 2 and 4. So here's that groove now. Here it is along with the track now at 90% of the original tempo. Now up to speed with that main groove and a couple of the variations.
Okay, now the next groove we're having a look at is the chorus beat. So here we have a little bit of that syncopation idea that if we're driving with the eighth notes, we have a couple snare drum parts in between those. So it sounds similar to this. Okay, now if you did want to chunk this and it was easier for you to learn it this way, you could basically play one and two and then and a three E and four. So, and I'll demonstrate. So, so one and two, and then you see the X snare, X snare, and bass drum. So, okay. So, Now the chorus beat slowed down to 90% of the original tempo. up to tempo. Now we're going to have a look at the lead in to the chorus, which is uh, there are three of them, and the first one is a two-measure phrase. The second one is also pretty much similar to that. It's a, it's a two-measure phrase. The third one is a four-measure phrase. They're all using the same elements. It's just the third one is longer. So if you're looking at the paper, you can actually see that as well. So looking at the first lead-in, you'll notice that the drum groove itself kinds of, kind of thins itself out. And... Again, he plays variations of this too. You don't have to get totally hung up exactly as to what he plays. But if you're counting along, it sounds like... Okay, now the 16th note's at the very end. Once we get to beat three of the second measure, we're counting and a four E and a. Just a bunch of, I guess, faster notes. Now, if you're familiar with all of this and, and you understand how to count this, then you won't have any problem. But you'll notice that as you're playing across these eighth notes, when you get to the sixteenth notes at the very end, the right stick comes down and the left hand joins in and almost kind of shadows it. So you're going to hear a double note. So it goes, it goes from this over to the snare drum and the left hand doubles it. Okay, so the lead in one more time. Okay, and a four yenta, and then we're falling into the chorus at that point. Now we're going to have a look at the chorus lead in number two. Uh, again, it's the same thing as number one. He just plays something slightly different, okay? Just a couple of different notes. So you'll notice now it sounds like, okay, there's one of those uhs. So one and two and uh and four and uh and two. Three, bop, 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 and a four end. Okay, same thing as the first lead in. So, so here is lead in number two at 90% of the original value.
Okay, at this point you get the idea with the loop. Sometimes it's kind of harsh going around in that circle, but it, it does help to be able to sit there and practice that and repeat it over if you really need to. So all of these files, again, you can download below the video and play along to them and adjust the tempos to however it suits your learning. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at the end of the chorus variation. You'll notice that we break free from the chorus groove at the very end of the chorus to kind of give us a little bit of these almost offsetting syncopated 16th note ideas. So you'll notice also that I bracketed them so you get an idea as to the ongoing pattern that kind of loops and it kind of loops over the bar line too. It kind of makes it a little difficult. But let's learn a, a part of this anyway. So we're going to chunk the first part. We have one and two. So. Now the next part goes hi-hat bass, hi-hat snare, bass. So. Okay, so that pattern again. You can build up your speed. Now you want three of those in a row and that finishes it off, so. Okay, now I'll try and accent the beginning part of that again too, so. Okay, totally slow that down. And again, that is what the app is for too, okay? So the whole entire groove Okay, now let's play along with that loop. I'm going to slow this down to 80 as well, just so we can feel and see where all the syncopated ideas are. Here it is up to tempo. Okay, now the last thing to have a look at here is the chorus lead in number three. Again, it's the same thing as number one and two, it's just longer. And he's playing a couple of different parts, taking his liberties uh, improvising, right? So um, what we have written down here is um, one and two and three and four, one and two, three and four, and one, two, uh, three and four, and then the last part leading into the end of four e end of those 16th notes, he comes over here and plays on the floor tom and the snare drum and builds it up. One and two and three and a four e end and flies right into the chorus, okay? So it sounds like this. Okay, let's try that slowed down to about 80, about 80. Here we 
are up to tempo.